that the living being who is with us, we are ignorant and we do not give them a place. We want to take more credit to something that is not there. The branding of the school becomes more important than the branding of this child. Being a guide to a child rather than being a dictator to a child. You don't expect much of your children. See what you can do for your child to let the child grow. Do not teach your children from your age because they are born in a different age. Let your child grow in this age. Just support the child and nurture him or her to grow the best. Hello and a very warm welcome to Great Principles. I am Seema Choria and I welcome you all to an insightful session today. Joining me in conversation is my very thoughtful educator of the day, Mr. Prem Prakash Sahu. He is the principal of Birla Open Mind School, uh, Bandla Guda Jagir, Hyderabad. Welcome to Great Principles, sir. I'm very honored to be in conversation with you. Great, sir. So, sir, before I move on and we discuss more on what all about the today's topics and our expert talk questions, let us first understand from you what motivated you to be an educator? Why you joined this profession? Uh, it's a long history. When I, um, I never knew that I would become a teacher. I never had anything in mind to become a teacher. I wanted to be into marketing and sales. So when I completed my uh, master's, I was looking for an opening uh, for a sales job. And I uh, did my graduation in uh, English literature and my master's in English literature. Uh, so this was basically my interest in writing poetry that had led me into literature. Uh, later on, uh, in those days, uh, there was no clue as to what you should do later on in life. Today, we are much more better placed than what it was earlier. So I, when I graduated and after my post-graduation, I got an offer from a British company uh, to market something which was completely different from what I studied. So I was a literature student and I was supposed to marketing weighing machines, you know, where the trucks get weighed. So there's a British company called Avery. Uh, I worked with them for a year and later on uh, moved into uh, a different marketing uh, project. And subsequently, I also worked with uh, time sharing, that is selling of resorts, because those were the times when Sterling Resort had come up uh, in a big way. Uh, and time share was a concept that was coming up. Uh, but then, uh, as I got married and my wife was into teaching, uh, uh, we did have uh, a time not for ourselves. So after my marriage and two three years later down the line when my daughter was born, I felt the necessity that I should be more spending more time with my family. But that wasn't the reason why I wanted to get into teaching. Uh, while I was in Sterling Resorts, uh, for three months, I was a star performer. So being a star performer consecutively for three months, I was asked to move into the training department, research and development and training, so that I could train people as to what kind of marketing they can uh, do later on in life. Uh, at that point of time, it was a choice I had to make. Should I go into training, which is teaching, uh, giving ideas? Uh, should I try my hand in teaching? So at that juncture, uh, I took a decision uh, that I should make my time a priority for my family. And if I can do the similar thing, what I was doing in training and what I can do in teaching, then why not teaching and be with my family? So that was the turning point. Uh, through the years, it so happened that I grew more as a teacher. I could connect with people, I could connect with students, I could connect with parents. And uh, that gave me more satisfaction than meeting people and talking to them about non-living objects that would work wonders for them. And where in uh, teaching 
I worked with living beings and I knew how responsible I have to be. So that was a different challenge. Uh, so today when I'm, I look back, I feel that it was a great decision for me to get into teaching. I grew as a teacher. I didn't have my BA. I did my BA. Uh, subsequently, I worked with uh, some of the best schools in the country and abroad and uh, had one, a whole lot of good mentors uh, along the along my path and this journey uh, who have helped me to develop the way I am today. So uh, I am quite satisfied with life today. Great, sir. So, you know, from job market to now leading an institute, it is altogether, as you said, there is a lot of responsibilities because here you have to deal with the living things. You are shaping lives. You'll be responsible for someone's entire life. So tell me, sir, in this journey, what were the challenges that came upon and how did you overcome them? See, the biggest challenge that comes uh, and uh, one of my visions and my ideas which I have started working on is no one takes care of uh, education. And uh, we all consider we all consider that uh, we are, uh, when it comes to school and education, we are all a part of it. And everyone seems to know better. So if I go to a doctor, I can't question him for whatever medicines he is giving me. But if a parent walks into my office, uh, he or she has all the ideas how the school should function. Okay, so th th this is this is the biggest challenge that even today we have. Uh, other than that, yes, getting to understand a child and to know what is it that they would like to learn is another challenge. We all get into a classroom. We all go with our lesson plan. We are not uh, interested to know uh, is the child ready for us. So this was one challenge. The second thing was, as a teacher, it was it is always assumed that we know better than the kid. So we do not give them the opportunity to expose themselves or get exploited. But sometimes uh, in my career, I've noticed that some of the questions that have been asked by my students have made it a better day for me. Some of the answers which I did not know I could get from them. So there are challenges which have always been beneficial to us. Right, sir. Yes, sir, I think something very practical is what you have put in up because this is what happens everywhere. No one asks a child what they want to learn and actually no one even have that much time. There is so much of syllabus to be completed, so many deadlines to be met and our teachers have multiple tasks apart from the core work of teaching also to be handled. So yes, uh, but a very important question to ask the child what he would like to learn. So tell me, sir, when you were in job market and now you are in teacher as a teacher and now leading an institute. So have you witnessed gaps in our education system and when a child steps out and faces the world? And do you have any thoughts on how we can bridge that gap? See, the gap in education system is the whole idea of comparison. And uh, to go back to what I told, we never realize what we want to, uh, what the child wants to learn. We always think what we want to teach. So uh, this is the major gap. If we can find out what is that the child wants to learn and what is that the child can excel in, then the child is passionate about what he wants to do and then comes success. In fact, this is what all our history has been speaking about. People who have succeeded in life have followed their passion. So the school education should cater to understanding the ability, the capability, and the interest of the child, and then focus and bring it up. So this is a gap. But what happens is we focus more on marks and grades. And those marks or grades are not genuinely what the child is all about. They don't determine the child at all. But that is where the child is uh, kind of uh, sadly put into a place, a fix, where he can't succeed. Agreed, sir. But the fact is, sir, you know, whether 
we like it or not but yes great to play a very very vital role in our country and parents the, see i'm um, if you belong to an entrepreneurial generation or even if you are born in business family but you if you have to do a job today job markets is judged by mark sheets you don't get into good colleges you don't get into universities and ultimately you suffer in terms of selection for jobs even your you know resume before meeting you you your resume is knocked down so what you will do what what parent will also do they will ultimately and even schools they will ultimately force the child to get good grades so how this all grade and rat race can be you know just we all can I, move away from it uh mr ma'am sorry to differ here uh, you don't want to uh really come up this way but uh, the fact that what are good colleges who's branded them what are good schools who has branded them are we trying to say that children who succeed are only from these places uh, there are no other schools where education doesn't happen and what is education education is not about marks and grades education is use of your learning in your life so and we have we have enough in history which talks about people who have succeeded probably have never gone to school uh so this creation of marks i as i admit that the rat race is created by rats like us but uh, is that the, is it, is it that what we are going to live up to or do we want to make a change so we have to question ourselves and find out what is a good school how do we categorize a school as a good school what do we categorize as a good college and uh, why do we say that it's not a good student see it's not the college or the school that makes a difference it's the student who makes a difference see again we are forgetting one thing that the living being who is with us we are ignorant and we do not give them a place we want to take more credit to something that is not there the schools and colleges won't be there without the students they are the life but we forget that wow brilliantly answer sir this one because this one is generally a tricky one and sir has really answered it very, very brilliantly so to my dear viewers as sir mentioned either you become the part of the race or ignite the change so you know let's try mm -hmm. to be that change makers and the beginning is done today so thank you so much sir for this wonderful answer here you have uh, enlightened many of us so moving ahead to a rapid fire round sir you need to answer me in one word or a single sentence sure all right so here goes my first question in your school days were you a back bencher or a front bencher uh i i was probably one of those rare people who were in the middle of the bench okay <laughs> all right which were your favorite subject i preferred to study physics that was my favorite subject and ended up doing uh, masters in literature yes Right. Great. Because uh, because when I was a student, and this is also a fact, uh, I can uh, I can do maths very well today. But when I was a student, unfortunately, I didn't go to a good school probably, or didn't go to a good teacher. The teacher always told me that I was no good in maths, so I dropped maths and physics. So this is what happens to some of our students, right? The branding yes. of the school becomes more important than the branding of the child. absolutely so and this is where the entire life of the child changes because of this branding so yes yeah. a very important take from today's episode is that we need to go away with this branding and labeling stuff so moving ahead to my next question what is that you would like to bring about in our education system so that our children get a stable future ahead uh the change that i would look forward to is uh, being a guide to a child rather than being a dictator to a child so when you become a guide or a coach or a counselor you help them understand their strengths and bring the best out of them so you give them be a, uh, i think the right word would be a coach a school requires coaches all right moving on to my next question is home schooling better than schooling what are your thoughts there's nothing called uh, better or worse uh, the question is education 
I I don't think I have so much time to tell you some of my experiences, but one thing I've learned that the farmer who has never gone to school and studied at home can still take care of the farm, grow the grains and sell it and make a living. So it's not a question of homeschooling or school schooling. It's a question of education and education can happen anywhere. Absolutely, sir. Moving ahead to my next question. If you wouldn't have been in this profession, what else would you have chosen? So I've moved from marketing to, I probably would have remained in marketing uh, a longer time. Uh, but yes, uh, I have uh, always uh, thought of being a counselor, a guide. So as of now, also, I'm a life coach. So that would be my option. Had I not been into teaching, I would be a coach. Okay, moving on to my next question. A tip of advice for our dear parents to not to label a child. Uh, I just want to repeat uh, two quotes. One is a very famous quote by uh, Khalil Gibran in his book, The Prophet. He says, your children are not your children, but life's longing for them. So uh, don't expect much of your children. See what you can do for your child to let the child grow. This is one quote. And the next one I would like to talk about is by Rabindranath Tagore. Uh, the Billa curriculum was based upon this philosophy of Tagore, which says, do not teach your children from your age because they are born in a different age. So for a parent, the advice is let your child grow in this age just support the child and nurture him or her to grow the best. Very wonderful advices by sir. So sir has quoted some really great men. So to my dear parents, please follow these and see the tool will definitely come in and you will get all the results that you are expecting. So moving ahead to my next question, sir. So you mentioned that you write poetries. So apart from that, what else do you do in your recreational time? I travel. Travel, all right. So, any favorite travel destination? Uh, anywhere, anywhere I can go. But then, most of the time, I would like to travel to uh, places where I can spend some time on my own. So, maybe national parks where you can spend some time with animals and birds. Those are the things which fascinate me. Moving ahead to the last question in this segment: How should the segregation of school classes be made? as per the grades or as per the subjects? Um, could you just uh, explain this question to me again? How should the segregation of classes in schools be made as per the standards or as per the subjects? So you mean to say uh, grade one, two, three, four, or is it should be English maths? Yeah. Uh, see, I have worked in a school which was uh, very popular as a parallel school, uh, where we had parallel classes. So the children of grade, uh, one, two, and three would sit in the same classroom and learn English. Uh, it has its own wonders. Okay. Uh, when you have graded classrooms of grade one, two, three, it has its own wonders. So it depends on what we want out of this. Okay. Uh, when preferably, if you want to ask me, I think the best option would be to have graded classrooms. One, two, three. All right. Great, sir. So this was our rapid fire round. Now we have reached the last question of the show that is for the expert talk question. So, so we have been talking about the schools, the years, the news, what the education is all about. So I think the sole person who is responsible to impart the right kind of education is teachers. So a teacher today is uh, you know expected to be no less than Madhurga, having multiple hands and doing so many stuff because there is so much expected to their parents and schools everyone want that a teacher will be taking care of multiple things but what about the teacher per se her emotional well-being her mental well-being what about that she is also a person she needs to she or he needs to keep away her personal life her personal chaos and then enter into the classroom and treat every child as one so how should we ensure that our teacher's mental well-being is at place. Uh, I can just give you an example of what I do in my school. Uh, is uh, I don't consider myself to be a principal. I am a coach and mentor. 
so my teachers feel uh, then they are comfortable to come and talk to me and discuss something which is bothering them because whatever is bothering them is bothering them from the students point of view we don't deal with their personal aspects of it but yes anything that's bothering them from the students point of view has to be heard and the solution has to be taken the solutions are always there with the teacher because the teacher is at the ground level handling it my job is to facilitate that solution through the teacher so this is what i practice with them this is my aspect of well being uh, that i look forward to uh, the whole idea is to touch lives and spread happiness so if my teacher is comfortable enough to come and discuss with me whatever is the issue or the concern and uh, is relieved after that at least sharing brings about a lot of relief to people who can share it with. so that is one very important aspect and as i mentioned earlier it's good to be a coach rather than a headmaster or a principal absolutely so so the core strength of any institute is their people and at schools yes it's the faculties so very rightly said sir as a leader we must ensure that our teachers our staff each one of us is comfortable enough to come and discuss their issues with us and when that is maintained you know then teachers can give their 100% and when they are mentally at peace automatically the results boost the, their creativity boost they are able to teach better and impart education better so this was mr prem prakash sahu with us today sharing some wonderful experiences of his own and sharing some wonderful tips so thank you so much sir for your time we hope that your words may resonate in the education world far and wide thank you so much thank you simon thank you so much